Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, we all made it through the Christmas weekend. Not the kind of Christmas we all are used to, I'm sure. But we all came out on the other side, and now we prepare to finish out this son of a bitch of a year. We've been through a lot here on the Jeffrey Epstein Show in the past year, the past two years, really. But in the past year, things have really accelerated. And we have seen a lot of movement in this case. There have been ups, there have been downs, there have been roadblocks, there have been disheartening decisions from the court, but there has also been a lot of good stuff as well. A lot of stuff that would point to justice finally being served in a case where it's long overdue. Let's remember, this is not a case that is brand new. This is not a case where nobody knows any of the details. This is a case that has literally been decades in the making. And finally, people are just putting two and two together. People are stringing together all of the circumstantial evidence that's out there and the picture that is painted when that is done is absolutely disgusting. So, as the case moves forward and we continue to see more information come out and during the Ghislaine Maxwell trial that is currently set to go off and explode in July, we're going to see a lot more, I would say, folks. And if the year 2020 hit an accelerated pace, I would say that the year 2021 is going to be like hitting hyperdrive in the Millennium Falcon. Jean-Luc Brunel was a huge domino to fall, and I believe that foreshadows a lot of other people who are going to face the same fate. And when I say a lot of other people, let's be clear. I mean the core four and Indyke and Khan. Those are the people that I am pretty confident that if this case is pursued and all co-conspirators are pursued the way that the SDNY and the uh, Department of Justice told us it would be, then I am pretty confident that those people will end up with some sort of criminal penalties. The other people, like we've talked about, the enablers, eh, not too sure, to be honest with you. If they tie them up financially, then it shouldn't be a hard sell. It should be real easy to tie all of these people together with money laundering crimes, tax evasion crimes, and all of the rest of it. It really just depends on if the SDNY has the inner fortitude to do it and if the Biden administration lets them pursue it. We know that it's very easy for an attorney general to put pressure on some of these uh, these these prosecutors who are pursuing these cases. We know that kind of stuff happens all the time. And it was one of the big things people were worried about with Barr. And I don't blame them. Barr is not what you would call a a guy that you could trust, right? A trustworthy source. And no matter how many people wanted to yell from the rooftops about Bill Barr and how he was pursuing justice. He was going to empty the swamp. Your boy over here always knew that that was a bunch of BS. A big old load of BS. Just like everything else Barr was on about. Dude is your typical scuzzball. The kind of person that we're always talking about here on the podcast. The bureaucrat. The boss kind of guy, you know, in there making decisions at a uh, a district level, killing cases. Barr, he, he embodies all of that. He's the epitome of all of that. And this is the dude who we're going to believe who says he saw tapes about Epstein when Epstein died. Now, look, I've said from the very beginning, I am more than willing 
to accept the fact that this dude killed himself. But we're going to need evidence of that, not just your word, because these people are not to be believed. And I have a hard time believing Bill Barr, Jeff Sessions, Eric Holder, Mukasey, any of these guys. You can point to any one of these attorney generals and look at the scumbaggery they were involved in. Every single one of them. So I'm supposed to trust these guys to come out and shoot us straight and tell us what really occurred when it's going to end up with egg all over their face? And furthermore, when I say, you know, I don't know what happened in that that jail cell, I don't know what happened in that jail cell. I have some opinions, right? And we can speculate for sure. And there are certainly way too many coincidences for me to just accept the narrative. But when I when when we say Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, you know, there there could be a lot of things that go into that, right? And in the article we're going to read today, there's you know, they they talk about the inmates that were around Epstein and how Epstein was extorted and how Epstein said the government wanted to kill him. So if the government was lax in their protection of Epstein, if the government allowed him to kill himself if that's what he did, then wouldn't the government share some of that responsibility? And wouldn't that also go into the fact that Epstein didn't kill himself, right? Because how could he do that if he was being watched the proper way? How could he possibly kill himself if the parameters were set and met? Look at the way Ghislaine Maxwell is being watched like a hawk. Epstein should have been watched the same exact way. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not here to tell you, yeah, he he definitely was killed by someone that night in that jail cell because I don't know that for a fact. But what I do know is this, the official narrative does not make any sense and there is not very much evidence to back that narrative up. So let's dive into this article from the Daily Mail. And let's see what Claire McCarthy has dug up. Headline, suicidal Jeffrey Epstein was extorted by prisoners, believe the government was trying to kill him and was made to sleep on the floor by guards during hellish final days in federal jail, fellow inmates claim. Again, this article was authored by Claire McCarthy. Let's just get something straight right away. I am completely 100% against abhorrent conditions in jail or prison. Now, I don't think it should be a bed and breakfast by any means, but I think that the prison system, along with the justice system, is absolutely broken in America. I'm sure elsewhere, but I can't speak on that. And there's no reforming going on here. Nobody's there's nobody's coming here and and, you know, changing their lives for the most part when they go into these prisons. They come out and they're better criminals than when they went in. And that needs to change. I don't like people living in conditions that are third world-ish or uh, uh, a, like like a, a prison in Iraq with bugs everywhere and shit like that. That's That's not the sort of prison system I want. And even though Jeffrey Epstein was an absolute scumbag, an absolute piece of shit, I don't think anyone should live in those conditions, right? Because, look, it's, it's, it says a lot about your society by the way you treat your most vulnerable and, yes, by the way you treat people in prison. So when I rail about Ghislaine Maxwell or, you know, the bologna sandwiches, that's because that's what everybody else is getting in there. Like I always say, I don't want anyone to get any better or any worse. I want everybody treated the same. And that that's part of the whole two-tier justice system that I'm always, you know, going on about and running my fat yap about. Because if it's Joe Blow, the hobo, or Ghislaine Maxwell, the socialite, it should not matter. Everybody should be treated the same in prison. Equal law, equal justice is the way it should be. And 
I don't think any of these inmates should live in crappy conditions in these jail cells. I mean, how, how hard of it, how, how, how hard is it to get an exterminator to come in and clean this shit up? But at the same time, let's not get it twisted, all right? When you go to prison, when you go to jail, it's not supposed to be an easy ride. It's not supposed to be fun. And if you have the unfortunate luck to end up on a maximum security yard, you're in for a real long, rough ride. And that's that's how it goes, right? When I say I, I don't think that the conditions in jail should be uh, uh, third worldish, I don't mean the politics. You can't control the politics in jail as far as the inmates go. I'm talking about if there's a bug infestation, it should be fixed up. If there's the heat's out, well, the heat should be fixed. You have to treat everybody, even inmates and prisoners, with a little bit of dignity, right? As a society. I know I don't want to be in a society where it's a throw away the key mentality where there's no chance for people to be rehabilitated. Now, of course, there are some crimes where there's no coming back from, like Jeffrey Epstein and, and child molesters and shit like that. You all know how I feel about that. Chemical castration. But sometimes people just make mistakes in their lives. People steal, people, you know, whatever it may be, sell drugs, whatever it may be. And that doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you a person who made a mistake. And when people go to these prisons, a lot of times there's no help, right? There's no, there's no anything to rehabilitate yourself. It's go hang out with the other inmates, learn some shit about being a criminal, a mastermind, get out and do it all over again. So I think that that should change. I think there should be sweeping changes to the prison system. And if you're in prison and you're not a violent offender, I think your living conditions should reflect that. And the more of a um, danger to society you are, the higher up the tier you should go and the less, um, you know, less things that you should have, the less, the less access to TV or whatever it may be. But I certainly don't have all the answers, right? And if I did, hell, nobody would probably listen anyway. But in a nation like the United States of America, I think that we need to get our act together for sure when it comes to the criminal justice system, when it comes to how these people are housed, and most certainly how things are conducted within these institutions because there's no doubt everything's broken. A suicidal Jeffrey Epstein was extorted by prisoners and believed the government was trying to kill him. According to fellow inmates in fresh details of his hellish final days before he killed himself, allegedly, in a federal jail. Of course he was getting extorted, right? If, he had, if you have any other access to the other inmates, which he should not have had, he's definitely going to get extorted. A guy like this, who was in there for sexual crimes, and you put him on the main line, forget it. This dude is a golden goose. People are going to be smashing him up for all kinds of dough. And they're going to run all kinds of schemes, plans, and plots all over him. Now, Jeffrey Epstein might have been a criminal in his world, right? He might have been this guy that was on point in his world. But his world consisted of soft-bellied so-called elites who are good at giving the orders for other people to do the dirt. But they don't do the dirt themselves. So when Epstein ended up in this jail and he was in there with, with real hard-hearted people, People who really do work. People who are on them streets, out in them streets, doing that damn thing. People who come from a place where it's easier to get a gun than it is to get a job. So they pull down the ski mask and get to rob. Jeffrey Epstein wasn't built like that. So of course when he hit the main line, of course when he was in prison, of course when they had the other inmates had access to him, he was going to get sweated. He was going to get his punk card pulled and he was going to end up paying. 
The millionaire pedophile's death at Manhattan's Metropolitan Correctional Center on August 10th last year was officially ruled as a suicide by hanging, despite murder conspiracy theories circulating widely online. Look, again, I am more than willing to accept that this dude killed himself, but let's see the receipts. Why was the crime scene, and that's what it is, according to the jail, when someone dies in jail, a crime scene, why wasn't the crime scene preserved? Where are all of the, where's the video of the crime scene? Why were no body cams on? Why, 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 and why? So until all of these questions are answered, people have a legitimate reason and a legitimate right to dig a little bit deeper to try and get to what really happened here. Nobody, certainly nobody on this podcast is just scratching the surface. We're doing deep dives. I'm talking Mariana Trench deep dive type shit. And so far, the official narrative does not pass the sniff test. But in interviews with Epstein's former inmates obtained by the Daily News, they reveal it was common knowledge in the prison that he was suicidal and cellmates warned him not to kill himself in their presence. First of all, why is Jeffrey Epstein around cellmates? Why does he, I mean, why does he have cellmates? Why is he around other inmates? Why isn't he absolutely safeguarded? Would you put El Chapo around other inmates? Hell no. For their own safety and for his. With Epstein, it's mainly for his safety, right? I'm sure Epstein isn't throwing hands with a uh, leader of the Latin Kings. I'm sure Jeffrey Epstein isn't picking up the phone and calling somebody who's going to greenlight somebody else on the main line because he has that kind of reach. El Chapo, on the other hand, yeah, that shit might have happened, no doubt about it. When I say Epstein shouldn't be around other inmates, that's because I didn't want him to get hurt. I wanted him to stand trial, just like all of you. I wanted him to sit there across from his accusers and get stared down by them as they recounted what occurred, how he abused them, the different levels of pain it caused them. That's what I wanted. And the government failed. So even if Epstein did say he killed, say Epstein did kill himself and the official narrative is true, did he really kill himself? Because the government was so damn negligent, how can you not toss a little bit of the responsibility on them no matter what at this point? So any way you chop it, the official narrative smells like doo-doo. One prison inmate claimed that Epstein was saying he was going to kill himself because the government is trying to kill him anyway. Now, remember who we're dealing with here. Jeffrey Epstein, very shrewd. We have lawyers who came out and said that he was not suicidal. Douglas Schoen has said that. Um, uh, a couple of uh, his other lawyers have said that. And Shuliak has said the same exact thing. Now we have inmates on the other side disputing that fact, saying Jeffrey Epstein was suicidal in fact. So I guess it basically comes down to, folks, who do you believe more? Who is a more reliable source? These inmates that were in there with Jeffrey Epstein, uh, some of these lawyers and other people he was talking to, or are none of them reliable and we're just never going to get to the bottom of what happened in that jail cell? Former inmates also revealed he was also subject to threats and extortion from fellow prisoners and mistreatment from prison guards who made him sleep on the floor. Now that's bunk ass shit right there and any prison guard engaging in demeaning behavior of an inmate should face severe, severe penalties in my opinion. These aren't zoo animals, all right? These are human beings. They might be, they might be uh, criminals and they might be the, the worst of society, but I mean, come on. When you do that kind of shit, all you do is open up a door for them to have an appeal and to maybe get out of jail. So here's an idea. Be a professional. Do your job. Get your paycheck. Go home. Work your 25 years. And collect your pension. Sources claimed he paid around $4,000 to inmates for contraband cell phones, though some were never provided. And that's definitely one of the licks in prison, right? You're a mark. You're a square. You're a punk. You're a joke. 
Well, these inmates, yeah, we'll get you some contraband, homie. What's up? It's going to cost you however much money. Let me get that dough, though. I'm going to need that up front. My people on the outside need that dodo right here, bro. That's, you know, the deal. And then Epstein pays the money. But on the flip side, he never, ever, ever even receives the phone in some cases. And what can he do about it? What, is he going to go to the screws? He's going to talk to the guards? Yeah, right. He's trying to buy contraband. Is he going to go to the people that already uh, already boned him here? No, of course not. So a regular prisoner, their only recourse is to go to a shot caller in the yard and try and get help that way. And I'm sure with enough money, Epstein could have done the same exact thing, right? Because money talks. And if you think the Aryan Brotherhood or uh, uh, any of these other groups within the prison walls, the Black Hand, you think these guys aren't going to take, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 from Epstein to protect him every month, you're wrong. They most certainly will. It is a vicious game of politics within the prison walls, folks. There is no doubt about that. It is Game of Thrones on steroids in those yards. They also claim that inmates would slide notes under his door saying, we're going to kill you, you rapist, you pedophile, while others offered him security for a fee. And there you go. There's no doubt that security was offered. Now, again, they could have just been screwing with him too. offer the security, take the money and then let him get stuck. Very possible. But it, like, it's also possible that if he was paying up on time every month, that a group like the Aryan Brotherhood would most certainly provide him protection if it's going to fatten their pockets, if it's going to help them buy more heroin or fentanyl or whatever the hell they're sneaking into the jail to sell. Hell yeah, they're going to be on board with that. Because you see, folks, it is a dog-eat-dog world. There is no doubt about it, especially within the walls of a prison. And the fact that he was getting those notes slipped under the door and shit, oh yeah, that would have been the rest of his life. Zero, there's no doubt about it. He would have had to go to the shoe. He would have to be in the protected yard with the other chomos and pedophiles and rapists and all of that. And that would have been the rest of his life because he could not have been on the main line. You see right here. And how any of this is possible is beyond me anyway, honestly, because he shouldn't, he shouldn't have had access to these other prisoners. But the government, in their negligent state, seemed to just have a hands-off approach with Jeffrey Epstein. Almost like they didn't care if he was harmed. Almost like they kind of wanted it, huh? Epstein, 66, first arrived at the prison after his arrest on July 6, 2019, while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. He was moved to the special housing unit four days later, which separated him from the rest of the inmates. There, exactly. He has to be in, he has to be in the shoe. No doubt about it. So, once he was in the shoe, that should have ended all of the other bullshit the extortion, the notes, blah, blah, blah. So how many of those notes could have possibly come in the first few days? How much of that happened in the first few days? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. But Epstein should have always been in the shoe. From the very first day, the government should have understood who they were dealing with. His cellmate during that time was Nick Tartaglioni a former police officer facing the death penalty on charges of killing four men in a botched drug deal. So again, ask yourselves, why in the hell would Jeffrey Epstein be celled up and his celly be a man who was waiting on death penalty charges for killing four men already? This dude has no hope, right? He's already on the cuff for four deaths. Why would you put a murderer in with Jeffrey effing Epstein after you already put him in the shoe? It does not make any sense whatsoever. Can anyone uh, give me a logical explanation for why this would occur? And why they wouldn't put him in a jail cell with someone like that dude, Bill Mercy, from the very beginning? Or a jailhouse snitch, hoping that he'd rat himself out? But instead, you put him in there with this muscle-bound, paisano, guido gorilla 
who has more uh, uh, steroids juiced into him, it looks like, than Rich Piana. And you mean to tell me this is a quality move? This is a good idea? This is a logical step? Well, I disagree wholeheartedly. Nicholas Tartaglioni had no business being in a jail cell with a guy like Jeffrey Epstein. One prison inmate claimed he overheard Tartaglioni warn Epstein not to kill himself while he was in the room, saying, Listen, don't do that shit in here. Do it on your own. So, an inmate claims he heard Tartaglioni saying that, but remember, the camera wasn't facing the jail cell. There's no documentation. Maybe Tartaglioni was choking his ass out and saying that while he was choking him out to lay his alibi. Remember, this is an ex-cop. This isn't a stupid man, right? This Nicholas Tartaglioni. You would think he's a pretty intelligent guy for the most part. You know, shrewd, I should say, street smart. Enough to come up with a plan like this. And maybe he was sent there to send a message. Maybe he was sent there to send a message to Epstein, telling Epstein, look, if you don't clip yourself, we're going to get you. That's speculation on my part. But again, nobody can answer why Tartaglioni would be in a damn jail cell with Jeffrey flipping Epstein. However, on July 23rd, Epstein first attempted to take his own life by hanging himself using a strip of bedsheet. Uh, allegedly. His cellmate, Tartaglioni, claims that he alerted prison officers and possibly saved Epstein's life which is not disputed by prosecutors, and later told fellow prisoners that Epstein told him he was going to give him $2 million in his will to thank him. Oh yeah, sure. Or that $2 million was so he didn't kill you in that jail cell. Maybe that's the case. Was that payoff money maybe? Again, I don't know. It's speculation on my part, but we have to take into account who we're dealing with here. And I don't mean Epstein. I'm talking about an ex-cop who is on the cuff for four murder charges and a drug deal gone bad. This is the guy that's going to tell Epstein, hey, don't kill yourself, buddy. I don't want you to die in here with me. This is a, a compassionate man. This is a man who's going around doing God's work. I mean, I guess, maybe. I, maybe everybody is a great character after all. So like, maybe he is this altruistic man who wanted Epstein to live a long, hearty life. Somehow, I doubt it, though. However, Tartaglioni's lawyer said he would be stunned beyond all imagination if it were true that his client was included in the millionaire's will. You mean the pedophile's will? And uh, I hope he's not included in the will, by the way. Because that's just more money that is not going to the girls that were abused. Epstein was put on suicide watch and moved to a cell with Efren Stone Reyes, the last inmate to share a cell with the sex offender. Oh, that's nice. A guy named Stone Reyes, huh? Again, hopefully this dude wasn't a, a murderer, though. Maybe this guy was just like a blue-collar criminal or some shit. You, you would think that's who they would put him in with, right? His memories of sharing a cell with Epstein were retold by his niece, Angelique Lopez, after Efren Stone Reyes passed away in his mother's apartment on November 27th. All right, so right here, I'm skeptical right away. This is a story of telephone. It was told to the niece by the uncle, Mr. Stone Reyes, who shared a cell with Jeffrey Epstein. So take it with a grain of salt, like everything else, right? We can only vet what we can vet. And then we can only, you know, believe what we believe. And for me, I'm just here to provide this information for you folks. And then you folks believe what you want to believe, right? Me personally, I don't really uh, take stuff like this too credible when it's second, third hand. Now, it might, add, it might be credible, right? But you'll need other sources to verify and back it up. So again, grain of salt time. He said he was a good cellmate who read a lot and kept to himself. However, according to Reyes' niece's account, her uncle said he was very depressed and mentioned that he didn't want to live anymore. Reyes' niece told the news that her uncle told him, don't do any of this while I'm in the room. So 
I could see that, right? If you're if you are in the jail cell with Jeffrey Epstein and you're this dude Reyes, the last thing you need in your life, especially if you're getting ready to get out, like obviously Reyes was, the last thing you need is a high profile inmate like Epstein killing himself in the jail cell and the, all of the eyes turning towards you as a potential suspect or as the potential killer. So I get that. I'd be the same way. I'd be like, look, dude, you are not killing yourself in this jail cell. If you think you're going to kill yourself in this jail cell, you have another thing coming. The screws would come around and I'd have him tied up to the bars with his like shirt and shit before I let him kill himself because I got enough problems, right? Especially if I'm sitting in a jail cell. Reyes also claimed that staff were treating Epstein like crap, making him sleep on the floor. After his death, a note was found in Epstein's cell saying that a correctional officer sent him burnt food and that giant bugs were crawling over his hands. Again, not a good look, right, for the MCC or the prison system in general. Now you're going to, you're going to have some bugs. This is New York City. But if it's to the point where they're crawling all over people's hands and shit like that, that's unacceptable in my opinion. And it's unneeded. We don't need to have a jail that's infested with bugs. Let's get it cleaned up. Let's get it fixed. Epstein hanged himself using ripped bed sheets less than 24 hours after Reyes was transferred to another detention center in Queens, New York, for cooperating witnesses. Ah, there you go. Reyes was a snitch. This is what they should have been doing from the very jump with Epstein. Put him in with a snitch, somebody who has some life to look forward to on the outside, somebody that could try and work him for some information. But instead, you put him in with Nicholas Tartaglioni? You see the stark difference here, right, folks? And my only question is, why? When he was released from prison in April, Reyes expressed doubts that Epstein could have hanged himself from the frame of the bunk bed as it wasn't tall enough, saying that it didn't make sense. However, he said he couldn't be sure as sometimes people are fighting something we know nothing about. I agree about him not being able to hang himself from that bed. It just does not... It doesn't look like it is something that's feasible to me. Am I a pathologist? Am I, you know, somebody who knows about hanging or asphyxiation or anything like that? No, totally not. But from what I've read and from my position over here in the peanut gallery, it seems like it would be damn hard to hang yourself in that situation. In a statement, Epstein's lawyer, Reed Weingarten, said, If your information is correct, it is horrifying that such conditions are generally tolerated in a federal prison within the shadows of the federal courthouse, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the FBI. I happen to agree with this idiot, unfortunately, about that. I don't want, again, I want these prisons to be... Uh, not tip top. It's not the, four, that's not the, uh, you know, the four seasons, but they should be clean. They should be livable. Nobody should be sleeping on the floor. And certainly there should be no infestations of bugs. Besides that, you know, you'll never hear me talking about, oh, I think they need more TV time. Nope. I think that your behavior should decide what sort of perks you get while you're a prisoner. If you make an effort to rehabilitate, you should get more. If you want to be a scuzz bag your whole life and stay in prison and do your gang banging and your drug dealing and your extortion, well, hey, have at it. You're not going to get any extra privileges. I mean, there won't be any like bugs anymore if I was in charge, but as far as extra privileges, forget about it. Those have to be earned in prison. And I think we should move more towards a system where people actually have a shot to rehabilitate. Again, not people like Epstein. I'm talking about overall people who got in trouble for drugs and shit like that. What would be even worse would be if federal law enforcement was specifically aware of the threats and extortions and did nothing to protect Epstein, but rather fought tooth and nail against any bail conditions so as to keep him in these conditions. When the government keeps an inmate in their custody, they are on the hook for protecting them. And I don't think the government went far enough protecting Epstein. 
It certainly looks like they've learned their lesson the second time around with Ghislaine Maxwell. But with Epstein, no matter if he killed himself, if he was allowed to kill himself, or if somebody else did the deed, the fact of the matter is there was a huge failure on the end of the, 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 the Bureau of Prisons, the Department of Justice, and the whole system as a whole. No inmate as high profile as Jeffrey Epstein should ever be in a jail cell with Nicholas Tartaglioni. Jeffrey Epstein should have been in a jail cell with somebody like this Mr. Reyes or Mr. Mercy. Instead, the government was negligent in their duties and Jeffrey Epstein died in their custody. Whether it be suicide or murder, the fact remains that Jeffrey Epstein was in the custody of the United States government and the United States government failed the survivors, failed society, and failed in their duties to keep one of the most high-profile inmates safe to face the justice that he so deserved. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, folks, I'll be back later on. I hope you all enjoy your Monday.